Okay, oh, hey, everybody. Welcome to Human Resources Management and Healthcare. This is what you've all been waiting for. Everyone's been um, having questions and questions and trying to even start the class before it actually starts, like two weeks early. Um, here goes. I can tell you guys are very eager to start learning because you love school so much. All right, so here we go. Um, I'm Professor Hussein, and I am going to let you guys know what the course expectations are going to be for this quarter. It's pretty much going to be what I usually do with a few modifications especially given that everything is going to be completely virtual. Okay, so in this welcome video, we're going to go over the purpose of this course. Okay, we're going to look at the different components of this course, how you're going to be graded, what the expectations are, how you're going to be successful in this course, and the usual stuff, whatever we normally would um, look at if we were on campus. Okay. Let's move forward. So what is even the purpose of this class? Okay, what, what are we learning here? So the purpose of this course is for us to learn as much as we can about human resource management as it pertains to healthcare. Okay, so we're going to get really familiar with a lot of different concepts in human resource management as it pertains to healthcare. Um, a lot of things that we are going to look at is just, a lot of it's just going to be generic human resource management type stuff, but we're also going to um, look at it through a healthcare perspective or healthcare lens as well. And the thing is, I usually like to make everything very simple. So if you're someone who doesn't like complicated things, me too. We're going to make this very simple. Okay. I like to, um, I'm not necessarily going to cover every single detail. For the most part, we're going to look at what's the most important. Uh, we're going to look at the major concepts, policies, and best practices in human resource management. And we really just want to focus a lot on the concepts and how we can apply them to, um, you know, human resource jobs in healthcare. Okay. So keep it simple. Um, we're not going to do too much memorizing and things like that. We want to just take the concepts and be able to apply them because that's what matters most anyways. That's the whole point of school. We need to learn some information and we need to just learn how we can apply that knowledge. School isn't about just memorizing a bunch of facts and we need to, um, especially since you guys are coming towards the end of your four-year degree, we need to be a little bit more scholarly and apply information, not just memorize information. Anyone can look up things on Google, okay? We are scholars here, so we need to figure out how to use the information, okay? So some of the cool things that we're gonna go over, we're gonna look at a lot of solutions, different strategies that help a healthcare business um, strive and thrive, okay? Both profitably and ethically, okay? We're gonna look at, um, Throughout this course, we're going to look at how to uh, even create a job. How are we going to even know that we need a job? How do we recruit people? Okay, how do we select the right person? How do we figure out how we're even supposed to um, pay them? There must be a strategy behind that. Well, we're going to figure out what that is. We're going to learn that. Okay, then we're going to learn a little bit more about um, organizational training and development and how we can just overall make um, and create an HR strategy that directly aligns with our business strategy so that the business can thrive in its market. That's really the whole point of this course. So, what is going to be expected? Well, normally we always have, um, I always do your participation grade is always going to consist of assignments, okay, your assignments and your attendance, okay. 
both, I believe, are super important because attendance is you participating in the learning environment. You are participating and um, just by showing up and paying attention and taking notes, okay, um, that is you soaking in all this, um, you know, as much knowledge of the material as possible. You're participating in learning, right? And then your assignments, you're working with the information given. Okay, so both are super important, very essential to learning, and that is why we do this. That's why this is required. Now, since we don't have a physical classroom to go to, um, attendance is going to be graded like this. Um, I'm going to offer the same amount of points I normally would, okay? But the thing is, um, <clears throat> attendance is going to be, well, basically, if you turn in your work for that week, then you're going to get your attendance grade, okay? So if I see that you're, because you clear, if you turn in the work, you probably watch the lectures, you probably did, you know, whatever. Okay, so you did your effort, made your effort for that week. You did your assignments, your case studies, and whatever else. If there's a quiz or something like that, then you get your attendance points for that week. Okay, if you do half of your homework, then I guess you are going to get half of the attendance points. So that's how it's going to work. Okay, if you do everything, that you're supposed to do for the week, you get full attendance. If you don't, then you're gonna get partial attendance. Every single week is worth um, 10 points in attendance um, credit, okay? You get 10 attendance points every single week. Right? So, if you do everything, you're gonna get all 10 points. If you don't do certain things, you're going to get maybe five points that week instead of 10. Okay. Um, another thing is um, Zoom meetings. We're not going to do Zoom meetings every single day or every single day that we have a class day. It's not going to work. We're not um, going to get into that. What is going to happen, because the thing is, is I have already, well, for most of the um, chapters of this course. I've already created lectures for you guys. They're on YouTube. They're on the website that I have already shared with you, but I'm going to put it up here anyway. Um, professor. Okay. And then H U S S A I N dot com. Okay, so this is the website that you're going to go to. And then when you go to this website, you can, in the menu, you should be able to find your class. And then that will have PowerPoints. And it will also have um, video lectures. Okay, it will take you straight to the YouTube um, video lectures that are available for each lesson for every single week. Okay, so those are all provided for you. So we don't have to have um, Zoom meetings every time and for all of this. That's um, So that will hopefully take the place of an actual lecture on campus. Okay, so I'm hoping that helps. Um, <clears throat> So that is what we're going to do instead. Now, Zoom meetings, what we're going to use that for are going is going to be for the um, for when we review for quizzes and when we review for the midterm, when we review for the final exam. That is when we will have Zoom meetings. So as a class, we're going to come together and we're going to review all of the information that we studied right on our own. That's when we're coming together. We're going to um, ask questions. We're going to discuss all. We may have an activity if I can figure out how to do an activity virtually with everyone on like Zoom and whatnot. Um, 
So we'll, we may possibly have an activity going on or we may just go over the review or we'll have some discussions about just really the information that you're going to need to know for that quiz or for that exam. Okay, so those that's what the Zoom meetings are going to be about. That's why there are only about maybe five or six of them instead of every single class meeting that we have. Okay, now our assignments, each assignment is going to be worth five points, right? So each assignment is worth five points. Now, every week you will have two assignments. Okay, so total, the total assignment points for every week will be 10 points. So basically your whole participation points in one whole week will equal 20 points. Okay, so assignments are already on Blackboard. They're in the, um, I think it's called weekly activities um, section on Blackboard. So you get in there and they should already have their due dates for like what day um, each assignment is going to be due. Now, there are going to be two assignments due every single week, okay? And our due dates for these assignments are going to be on Mondays and Wednesdays, okay? So due every Monday and Wednesday, okay? So assignments will, there will be an assignment due every Monday and every Wednesday, don't forget that. So something that's also really important for you guys to know is that the assignments are posted now, you have access to all the assignments. However, when the, on the day that that assignment is due, it's going to disappear. Okay, so once it passes its due date, its due date and time, it's gonna be 11.59 p.m. on Monday and on Wednesday. So after, like, let's say Monday at 11.59 p.m., that assignment that was due at that time, it's going to disappear. You no longer have access to that assignment, nor are you allowed to turn it in. So that's why it's very important to turn in your assignments on time, okay? So always get them on time. Don't wait till the last minute. And um, yeah, like maybe Tuesday morning, don't go, oh no, what happened to the assignment? Well, it's gone, okay? You can only, you only have until that exact time and day that it's due to turn it in, otherwise it's gone forever. You do not have access, you can't turn it in again, okay? So if you snooze, you lose, all right? Um, so yeah, every Monday, Wednesday, 11.59 p.m. Now there is no assignment due today, but I believe I made our first assignment due Wednesday. So Wednesday on, or at 11.59 p.m. is when your first assignment is due. And that's just going to be on chapter one. It's going to be very easy. Um, everything is already, you should have the resources with the assignments. Um, yeah, you should have everything you need to go ahead and answer those questions and start learning. Okay, let's move forward. Quizzes. So, there will be a total of four quizzes this quarter, but only the top three scores will count for your grade. Okay, your top three best scores will be your grade, and your worst score, okay, the worst score that you get will be added as extra credit at the end of the quarter. So everyone already has an opportunity to have that like cushion, okay, right now. So I hope you all feel really comfortable. You're welcome. Um, you all have a nice, good little cushion to get comfortable in. Um, as long as you do all four quizzes. If you're one of those people who decide, hmm, well, since it doesn't really count, only three of them really count for your grade, you only take three, then the fourth quiz, well, it's gonna be nothing to you. It doesn't really matter, okay? But I highly recommend everyone take all four quizzes. You don't make, 
maybe this will give you an opportunity to just, you know, not study for one of them. And those are just free points, whatever you happen to get. That's fine. But keep in mind, the better you do on all four quizzes, the more extra credit you're going to have. Okay. So it's actually worthwhile. It will pay off if you work hard and you study and you do all four quizzes because then you're going to have a lot of extra credit. So anyway, um, each quiz is going to be worth 60 points. So that means um, you have a total of 180 points towards your overall grade. Okay, and then you'll have, let's say if you got 100% on every single quiz, you're going to get an extra 60 um, points for extra credit added to your grade at the end of the quarter. That sounds amazing. You're welcome. Anyway, so if unusual circumstances occur in, well, normally when I say if unusual circumstances occur, we may put the quiz online, but guess what? These are unusual circumstances. We're definitely putting all the quizzes online. Everything's online. So there's that. Um, anyway, every time, every day that the, we're going to have a quiz that's going to open up that day. Okay. Um, of course, I'll give you a couple of days to take your quiz. But the day that it, the quiz is going to open is when we're going to have our Zoom meeting. So our review day, we're always going to have a review day the day that we have a quiz coming up. Okay. And that will be when we have a Zoom meeting. And the date should be on the syllabus, but I think that maybe I made a mistake on some of them because it just... There was a lot of weird confusion that happened with this particular course. Um, actually, I usually in the spring quarter, this course is offered on Saturdays. So in my mind, I thought like, cause since I was told it was business as usual, I assumed it's just gonna be a Saturday class. And um, then I realized it wasn't a Saturday class. So I had to change a lot of things, but um, <laughs> Not a problem. So <clears throat> the thing is, is that every time we have a review day, we will do a Zoom meeting. And this is where we go over all of our, you know, material for that we need to know for the quiz and answer any questions. Hopefully we can do like an activity so it won't be boring, but we'll see what happens. Um, this obviously is mandatory and it will count for your attendance grade. Okay. So if you don't do this, then you will miss out on points. And usually what I like to do is find a way on our review days to give extra credit. Okay. I'll have to figure out how that's going to work. But, um, you know, I will find some way, I think. Um, to be able to have some sort of extra credit opportunity for you guys, or at least to work for some sort of extra credit opportunity um, during that Zoom meeting. But we'll see how that works out. Okay. Um, our first one, I believe, is next week on Wednesday. I want to, I need to check on that, but I believe that's when the first one is because that, I think that's when we have our first quiz. Uh, of course, I will put um, reminders all the time so I'll remind everyone through email and I will remind everyone just as an announcement on Blackboard as well and then whenever we do have a Zoom meeting I'm just gonna send everyone a link to it okay um, but yeah so whenever we do have these Zoom meetings this will be during our class time so um, this would be during a review day so whatever day we're having our quiz right or if it's like a midterm or final exam um, so whatever day we're having it, right? And it will be during whatever our regular class time would normally be. So our regular class time is usually at 10 um, a.m., right? That is when the Zoom meeting will happen. So if you need to schedule anything, that th this is going to be the general rule. It's going to start at 10 a.m., and it's going to be on a day that we have a quiz or a midterm, okay? And the purpose of this, like I said, is to review, 
Okay, we want to make sure we're all on the right page before we even start on the exam. Um, and I'm not necessarily saying that this is going to last for two hours. Who knows, it might, we'll just see where it goes, okay? So it might not last the whole two hours, but we just need to make sure that we get, we cover whatever we need to cover, okay? And then, and then once it's, once we've covered everything that we need to cover, no one has any more questions, then we can just be on our merry way and go start on the quiz or do whatever we gotta do, um, go eat some more snacks or play or whatever we do during the day right now. Mm. So next thing that uh, we wanna talk about having to do with quizzes are the quiz corrections. So I like to always give everyone an opportunity to, um, to redeem the points that they missed during the quizzes, okay? So this will give you a better understanding of the material when you look back and you try to um, go back and look for the answers and understanding of those answers and then you turn it into me and then you get half credit of the points that you missed. Okay, that's the deal. So how you're gonna do quiz corrections is, um, see all of the quizzes are multiple choice, true and false, all of that, right? And they're all on, they're all gonna be on Blackboard. So I hope, um, I made it so that you're supposed to be allowed to see um, the answers and what answers you've chosen, okay? Um, when you finish the quiz. So what you're gonna do, if you want to do your quiz cor corrections, is when it shows you your answers at the end of the quiz, you need to write them down or take screenshots, whatever you gotta do. And then, so that way you know which ones you got wrong. You know the question and you should know the answer, but who cares if you don't know the answer? Because what you're gonna do is you're gonna type that into Google or look in your book or go through your um, go through the lectures, the class lectures or the PowerPoints, go through the information that you're supposed to have for this course and re-answer those questions. But you're not gonna re-answer them based on um, the, the answer choices anymore, okay? You're done with that. You don't get to answer them like that anymore. Now you have to answer these questions in like a paragraph form, okay? Like a paragraph or essay form. You're gonna, so your answers to these questions should be way more meaningful now. You should have the correct answer, plus you have to give support for why that's the answer, okay? So the question, you ask the question, you're gonna be like, this is the answer, such and such, because, Blah, 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 and so this, and then this. Okay, you need to give support now for your answer. Okay, so you're gonna go a bit more deeper, and then you're going to receive those points back, or actually have credit for each question. Sometimes if I feel like you've done an outstanding job at, you know, doing your quiz corrections, I may throw in some extra points. Usually, with me, um, when you have, when, when you've done hard, meaningful work here, you've done, you've, I can tell that you thought really hard about your answers and you, you did some research. Okay. I noticed that and I tend to reward you with more points. So it's not any kind of official extra credit opportunity, but if I do see you doing an outstanding job in any of your work, I'm probably going to get really excited, very proud of you, and be like, you know what, you deserve a few extra points. That's just what I do. So I'm just saying, if you do a good job, you might be happy with yourself, okay? You might be happy with the results, is all I'm trying to say. Um, so let's move forward. All right, so exams. The moment of truth, okay. <clears throat> Sorry. We are gonna do two different exams in this course. We're gonna first do the midterm, okay? And that will cover literally half of the book. So chapters one through six. Um, this will be, 
multiple choice true and false questions. It's going to be about <clears throat> um, 40 or so questions. Give or take could be um, 50, but 40, 50 ish questions um, and 150 points on that. Um, and then we have the final exam. Okay, this is of course, same thing, true, false, multiple choice, all that, but this one is cumulative. So it's gonna be everything chapters one through 12. Um, this one will be worth 200 points. But like I said, before we do any of these exams, on the day that the exam is supposed to open on Blackboard, we will have a review day. We're gonna have a review session. That's, we're of course gonna do another Zoom meeting at 10 a.m. on whatever day it's supposed to be. And we're gonna review the information, okay? And you will have, like I said, I'll probably come up with some sort of extra credit opportunity as well for you guys. Okay, so for the most part, you're going to be fine. Oh, yeah. And this one is always 100 questions. Ah, she's going to kill it now. Um, so, yeah, 100 questions. But, I mean, let's be honest. No one has ever taken very long with this test. Usually by the final exam. I mean, I know that it's different because this is all virtual now. And really, a lot of this is all your responsibility. You guys have to be motivated. I I'm of course doing my part, um, but when I pass all this to you, like the lectures and the videos and give you all the resources, you have to use them, okay? So um, you gotta be motivated enough to use all this stuff on your own, everything that I'm giving you. And then at that point, if you're doing everything that you're supposed to be doing, um, I guarantee you, you're, you're not gonna be mad at the final exam. You're going to be okay. Um, I've, it's never ever once in my entire life been terrible. I'm telling you last, um, last quarter. All right. Um, the final exam for this class, the class average was 85%. I think that was an exceptionally like class that kept scoring well on everything somehow, but, um, it's never ever been below 75 is what I'm saying so I mean of course we have really high scores we have really a couple low scores but usually people stay above 75 ish or stay you know somewhere within there so for the most part do not be scared you're gonna be fine I'm not worried about anybody and I'm pretty sure virtual version is gonna be just as good as uh, the on-campus version maybe even better. You guys just have to make sure you stay a little bit motivated and use the time to do what you're supposed to do. Okay, put in the effort in this class and you will not be disappointed. Anyway, let's move on. Um, next we have case study review responses. So every single week, well not every single week, but mostly every week, uh, we will have case studies for you guys to do, okay? And every single <clears throat> case study will basically require you to read the whole um, the whole scenario and then answer the questions and that will be your initial post okay and then respond to two different people okay so respond to another student too and I mean the, the um, case studies themselves actually have um instructions so it's there is a reminder there telling you to respond to two people and they need to be meaningful responses they need to have something to do with the material you need to you need to show me that you're synthesizing their um what your your fellow peers have said what your classmates have said and that you're thinking about it and you're processing it and you have something to say about that, okay? Uh, I, I'm not even going to bother giving you credit if you say something like, hi, 
I agree with what you said here. If that's all you say, you can say that, but you have to explain why you agree, okay? If you just say you agree with such and such, and that's all you say, then it's not gonna count. I'm sorry. It's not gonna count or at all. So you have to say exactly why. Give me a good, meaningful response. I need to feel it, okay? I need to feel like you know it, what you're doing. And if you do, then you're gonna get all the points. Okay, so um, each one is gonna be, well, the first five are going to be worth 20 points each, okay? And then we're gonna move towards the um, last couple weeks of the quarter, because we only have eight case studies total. All right, there will only be eight case studies total. Okay, so once we get to the last three, they will be 30 points each. So the first several are gonna be 20 and then, then they're gonna be 30 points each. And it's going to come out to a total of 200 points. Okay, so case studies, all of them put together equal a final exam. And then if you also think about it, your, your, um, your participation also equals a final exam. And your, your quizzes total, they also equal almost a final exam. So all the different components are almost equally important in this course, okay? All of the di these different ways, all of the different things that we're doing in this class, these are different ways that we are synthesizing the information provided in this course, okay? It's being given to you in different forms, but you're working with them, so they're all very important. Okay, so hopefully the goal is by the end of the quarter, you're gonna have seen the same information coming at you in all these different ways. It's gonna strengthen those neural um, pathways in your brain with that information. And you should be able to use this and apply this to life, to your jobs in the future and whatnot. So that's really the whole point of this course and that's why we do all this stuff, okay? Now there are going to be so many um, opportunities is what like um, for you to earn extra credits, for you to succeed and do really well in this class. Um, I do like to just throw out extra credit points all over the place when I feel like you've been working hard and you deserve it and you put in extra effort. Even with these case study reviews, if you blow my mind with what you're writing, I'm going to give you more points. You're going to get more points than your 20 or your 30. Okay, you're going to get more from me. But it's only going to happen if you make that effort. Okay, so let's move forward. Um, so ways that you are going to be able to reach me, uh, mostly email. Okay, but um, also you can, um, if you need... If it's an emergency and you need a quick response, because I do check my email periodically throughout the day, um, but who knows, it could be a couple hours until I get you, okay? So if it's, if it's an emergency, you have to um, res you have response like now. Um, you can always text me, okay? So you can send me a message and then I'll get to you when I see it, which is probably going to be immediately unless I'm doing something else. Okay, so that's a lot faster. Um, but please do not use this unless you got to use this. Okay. So anyway, um, I'll update everyone through announcements and through emails. So always check your emails, guys. 
And also, I am posting every, all of the lectures on my website. And you can barely see it here, but you already saw it. You already know what it is. And that has the PowerPoint lectures that will also have video lectures and any other resourceful information that I think you guys can use. I'll put it there. And I also try to put um, links to, I know I have the lectures up on Blackboard and I believe I was trying to put the links to the, um, to the video lectures as well. So it's kind of everywhere. You, can, you should have some way to access it. You should find it somewhere. Um, what else? Mm. Makeup work. Okay, so makeup work. If you miss a quiz or an exam, then I guess you're out of luck. You missed a quiz or an exam. If you didn't give me any kind of indication or if there was no emergency, you have no proof, you have no like real legit reason for why you missed something like that, then, then you're just not gonna get credit for that, okay? Um, as far as uh, missing work goes, okay? Like assignments and case studies, as far as that goes, you will have an opportunity to make up that work at the end of the quarter. Okay, so at the end of the quarter, I will open up the assignments and I'll open up the key studies and you'll be able to see those and go ahead and do them and then you can turn them in. Okay, but you're only going to receive half credit. Okay. Half credit for each thing that you turn in. Um, half credit for makeup work. Last week of the quarter. All right. So last week of the quarter, I'll open everything up. You'll have a week to get all that in. And there you go. Your, um, the case studies, however, when you redo your, when you make up your case studies, you're not going to do them in the same form that you, um, the case studies originally, where you give your initial post and then you respond to two people. We're not doing that because, of course, you don't have, you didn't do it in time, so you don't have people to respond to. What you're going to do instead is, you're gonna to have to take the case study and respond to that in essay form. Okay, you're gonna type up an essay. Okay, while well, you answer the questions and everything. Okay, so that's how it's gonna work out if you miss any work and you will not get to make anything up until the last week of the course and you will get half credit. Okay, half credit for all the things that you want to make up. Um, if, you know, you have a legit reason, if something's going on, uh, with you and it's, it's throwing you off and you're not able to focus on school or you're not, you don't have the time or just anything is happening. Okay. Um, you have a real reason for why you can't keep up, um, with everyone else, with how the course is moving then you can communicate that to me. You don't necessarily have to give me your details, but um, communicate what's happening and then we can try to figure something out for you. Okay, we'll, we'll figure something out for you so that you can still be successful in this course. All right, move forward. So university policies are on the syllabus, changes in the course structure, all that. So, um, what I do want to say is that um, I'm also getting a lot of questions about the book, and I can't believe that I completely forgot to put the book in here. Um, okay, so the book itself, I, um, for this particular course, I use the second edition. Okay, I know a lot of students out there will use the first edition, because I believe the first edition is with the IBN number. Um, on the syllabus 
um, corresponds to. But I I use the um, the latest edi or the second edition. I don't know if there's a third yet, but um, so I feel like that information is a bit more I don't know modern, relevant. I really love that edition for this course. So I would suggest getting that if you really want to spend money on a book. However, um, it's not really necessary. We're not going to be doing anything in this course where you have to like have a specific book and you'll have to like look up questions like on particular specific pages and you know memorize something. You know, I'm not I'm not putting you in a situation where you have to purchase a book and you have to spend a ton of money on a book. Okay. Um, don't tell on me. Well, um, but to be honest, if I really only um, recommend to get this particular book, it does, it's very helpful. It's good for reference. Um, I would really only say get this book if you are very interested in um, a future in human resources because this will definitely have a lot of good information for you especially the second edition i would choose second over first however if you if you don't really care about that that's fine um but if you're someone who like really does need to read in order to learn and be successful you're you're the reading kind of a learner okay um then yeah get the book please it will help you out so much but if um if you are i don't want you to spend too much money either okay so and if you don't care too much about necessarily going too far with human resources and all that the first edition is actually really good and really the only difference between the first and the second edition are the last few chapters okay the last like i think three chapters or so um are a little bit different but everything else in the first edition is almost identical to the second. Okay, so that's fine. Um, that one's going to be a whole lot cheaper. Okay, so you can easily just get that and use that as reference, especially if you're a reader, then definitely. Um, I don't want to tell you not to get a book because that's how you learn and it's going to be very helpful. Um, if you are not a reader, you don't like... you buying books for you is a waste of money you only buy books if there's a if they're like it's actually required required for a course then don't bother getting it it's fine um what i would do is use all of our all the resources that i'm going to give you it should be more it should be plenty to be successful in the course it's not going to hurt you on exams or anything like that because everything on exams will come from my lectures Okay, so the videos, um, especially if you're an audio learner or whatever, the video should help you quite a bit. Okay, also if you're visual, it, you know, of course videos would help as well, but like maybe you just want the PowerPoint, you just want a nice clean PowerPoint for you to go ahead and dissect. I have those as well for you. So you have resources and I'll hopefully be able to continuously give you more things that can help you throughout this course, but if, like I said, if you're not um, someone who reads books, if you just buy books for the, just because they tell you that you have to and you, you almost never open them unless there's a reason why you have to, um, I would not spend the money, okay? Um, you'll be fine without it. You'll still be successful in this course. So that's my take on the book. Um, and I think that is all for this particular course. So I hope that this video helps you out a lot. And um, if you have any questions, of course, you can email me, comment on YouTube or anything like that. And if it's an emergency, you may text. All right, um, see you, I guess, next week when we have our Zoom meeting. Until then, keep up with the lectures and the work on Blackboard, okay? And bye-bye.